Hi, today I'm going to be talking about logic models. I'm going to share what the components of a logic model are and provide a little bit of guidance on how you can create one yourself. My name is Michelle Molina at Connecting Evidence and before we jump right into logic models, I want to share a little bit of background on what a theory of change is. A theory of change is some sort of document that outlines how the things you do are connected to the changes you want to see. It could take many forms. It can be a narrative, a picture, and in this case, we're specifically talking about a logic model. And when you're developing a theory of change, um, the end product is often some sort of document. But the benefits of developing a theory of change are not necessarily that document, but the amount of thought and critical thinking it takes to really consider whether or not the activities you're planning are actually going to lead to the changes and the results you want to see. I made a summary of today's video that you can download in the description below. What are the five components of a logic model? We have an impact statement. There's also inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes. The first component I'm going to talk about is the impact statement. So an impact statement is a brief three to four sentences describing your work. And you might have heard three to four sentences and gotten a little scared, but I encourage you to push yourself to simplify your description as much as possible. I want you to ask yourself four questions. One, what do you do? Two, who do you do it for? Three, how do you do it? And four, why? So create a sentence for each of those questions, and there you have a very brief description of the work you do. And I want to challenge you not to get stuck wordsmithing. That's very easy to do, but remember that a theory of change and a logic model is a working document. The benefits of the document is the thought that goes into creating it, not necessarily the document itself. So it's ever changing and you can always go back and change the words around if you find something that fits better. The next component is input. Inputs are the resources you need to implement your work. These generally fall into three major categories. You have personnel, you have funding, and you have, finally, supplies. So think about the things you need to implement your work. If you're having trouble doing this at the moment, you might want to wait until after you outlined your activities. The next component is activities. This is basically a list of the things you plan to do. If you're being asked to create more than a list here, you might want to create an impact statement for each activity, but that's not necessary for this section all the time. The next component is outputs. Outputs are quantifications of your activities. You want to ask yourself, what is the best way to describe this activity in numbers? Is it the number of people who will participate, the number of sessions that will take place, the number of times this activity will be put on, is it the number of minutes people will be there doing that activity? It really depends on what the activity is. So ask yourself, what is the best way to describe this activity in numbers? Finally, we have outcomes, and outcomes are the changes you want to see because of the work you're doing. They're usually changes in knowledge, attitude, and behavior. They might also be changes in policies, systems, and environments. So look at your list of activities. Consider why you're doing that work, what changes you want to see. You might also have to organize your changes into short-term, intermediate term, and long-term changes. I think of this more of a spectrum, which is why sometimes it's hard to figure out where an outcome might go. Um, Short-term changes, they're usually changes that happen right after an activity. They're the changes you hope to see when someone walks away. You have a direct impact on those changes. Intermediate term changes, they're slightly more broader. They happen because the short-term changes took place. And long-term changes, they're the broadest. They're the changes that take the longest time to happen. They're changes you might not have a direct impact on, but you contribute to. Don't forget to download a summary of today's video in the description below. 
And if you have any questions about data use, evaluation, or even logic models, let me know because I want to work on a series of videos where I answer your questions. So you could put your questions in the comments below or you could simply fill out a short form. Um, also, if you liked today's video, please let me know by liking it, subscribing, or even sharing it with others. And if you want regular resources from me, you can join my mailing list.